Hi guys, this is EEPROM Experimentation Part 2. I'm back to using Julian Lett's breadboard circuit setup. The only change I've made to the board is to make some jumpers longer to make it easier to change them from high to low. Let's forget about the 16 button combinations and just look at 5 because it's a valid combination when no buttons are pressed. And you'll notice one of those addresses is now 0. The EEPROM I'm using probably isn't exactly the same as Julian's, it's 27C128. There's only three changes we have to make to put it into programming mode. We have to set output enable off, programming mode on, and provide a programming voltage on the programming voltage pin VPP, and I'm doing that with an external supply. The LEDs in programming mode will already be holding the data inputs low uh, through the LEDs and resistors. So I'm going to program one of these addresses right in front of you by swapping the state of the output enable and programming mode pins and then uh, disconnecting the programming voltage from VCC and I'm going to temporarily tie that to a 14 volt supply uh, while holding down one of the buttons to set an address. Now of course you didn't see anything happen there because the data outputs are inputs in programming mode but when I uh, toggle the three states that I have to toggle uh, the output enable turn that back on uh, the programming mode set that back to read and tie uh, the programming voltage pin back to VCC it will be back in read mode and you'll note that another address is set to all zeros. That's really all there is to it. If you had a long time, you could program an EEPROM manually. There's no further need for this breadboard. Uh, the next video will go straight on to my prototype circuit and uh, hopefully we'll have a working uh, IDE port on an Amiga CD32 debug board. Catch us next time.